Hey guys, it's Redefined Horizons. My name is Landon. This is the CAD meeting video I'm doing for the week of September 5th, 2022. It is stinking hot in Stockton. It is like 112 degrees. So uh, I've got a brand new air conditioner on my relatively new house and it can't keep up. So it's stinking hot. But we're going to do some cat training. And I already recorded this video 30 minutes and realized I was recording the wrong monitor, which really sucks. So I get to redo this. So it should be a really good video because I've already had a dry run. All right. So this whole cat meeting this week is going to be done in Carlson Survey. So we're going to show you how to move point attributes. Uh, what Carlson calls point attributes, point labels. Uh, we're going to show you how to cogo some tangent curves with a map example. And then we're going to show you a couple of utilities in Carlson survey. We're going to show you the layer translate tool and the drawing cleanup tool. So some cool stuff. I want, I've want. i been doing mostly videos in BricsCAD, but I wanted to do some videos in Carlson. All right, so let's show you guys how to um, move point attributes so to do that we got to get some points in our drawing so I've already got some points loaded in our coordinate database so we're going to just go ahead and draw those so here they are here are the point attributes and you can see right here we've got some overlapping points which stinks so whenever you create an all point all points drawing in my shop what we call an all points drawing You want to do that at a small enough scale so that you don't have a lot of overlap. So sometimes it's one to one or one to five horizontal scale. Uh, but then you want to go in, you're still going to have some overlap. You want to go in and fix that. So uh, we've got an example here. Now this is dumb. This is just a check shot on a center line mon. Um, so I would normally just come in and delete the check shot. Okay, but we're going to pretend like these are both valid points. So you could get this, for example, with, the, with a flow line and a top face of curb. So let's just see how you move them move these uh, le these labels they're called point attributes so if you go under the points menu you've got two options here you can move point attributes or move point attributes with leader so we're gonna do this first one I don't like it as much but it will allow you to click on a single attribute and then pick a rotation if you want so if we want we could just move um, the point numbers okay we could rotate that if we want Okay, so that's, you know, you might use that if you only had to overlap on, on one attribute. Uh, but the one I that is more useful, I think, is move point attributes with leader. So when you click that, it'll actually pull the whole thing out with a leader. Okay, now when you first run the command, you may not get something that looks like this because I've already set the options up. So let's go in and look at that. So if we go into points, move point attributes with leader, and then click down here on options. You want to set these up. Okay, so um, set this to a tenth. I'm going to draw my tick to. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I had a sneeze there. Uh, I like to draw my arrowhead. I like all these to be a tenth. I want to offset the arrow off the symbol a little bit. Three, three hundredths works. Um, I don't change the order of the point attributes. You can leave, I just leave the leader on the current layer. And uh, you can see if you click this again, um, now it's given us that landing, which is cool. I actually, I like the landing there. Okay, so that's a super easy way uh, to move uh, point attributes in Carlson. Okay. Um, also, real quick, I don't know when you guys would use this, but I'm going to show you. You can actually twist all the attributes or a set of attributes. So that's under here, twist point attributes. And we're going to use uh, an azimuth. And I'm going to say attributes to twist are all. And I'm going to enter my azimuth as 45 degrees. And then it's going to let me um, select some entities here. And so you can see those all rotated 45 degrees. Okay. So you can twist your attributes if you want. Point attributes. All right. So enough about points. Let's show you guys how to draw some tangent curves. Um, so I actually have a map here that we're going to work with for a little bit. All right, so this is a subdivision map we were working with the other day, and it's got some tangent curves and some compound curves. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw this little piece here, and uh, we'll show you how to 
draw a couple tangent curves and then glue them together and then we'll come in here and we'll do these um, we'll do this set of curves these are uh, reverse curves so we'll show you how to do that reverse curves compound curves work the same way okay so to get us started you should always start with a straight line segment if you can so don't don't start by drawing your curve so I'm gonna come in here and uh, we're just doesn't matter what coordinates we're in for now so I'm gonna come to Sir or Kogo draw a line by angle distance Okay, my bearing code on this line is, um, let's see, is northwest, so quadrant code is 4. Okay, the bearing is uh, 0, 0 0.1112, and my distance is 266.88. Okay, so let me just show you guys what we drew there. We drew this line segment. Okay, now we're going to put in this tangent curve. Okay, so we need to know the radius and the length. So just remember the radius is 275, and if we're standing here on the tangent looking at the curve, the curve swings away to the right there. Okay, so if it had swung to the left, we'd have to use a negative radius, but because it's to the right, we can use a positive radius. Okay, so to draw this, we're going to go to draw arc. And almost always what we want when we're drawing a tangent curve is this command right here tangent, PC point of curvature, radius, and arc length. Okay, so it says uh, enter your arc. So remember we're positive 275. I'm sorry, that's a radius, the radius of our arc. Okay, then it says give me your length. Our length is 108.49. Okay, and then it says pick your point of curvature. I'm gonna pick the end and then it's just pick any point on the tangent. And so it drew in the tangent curve there, okay. And you can just kind of gut check that. That looks about right. Okay, and what that means, if a curve is tangent, that means that the radial line going into the PC, so if I draw a line here from the point of curvature and I draw it to the center, that line should form a 90 degree angle with the tangent end. That is how you know it is a radial curve. And I may not know how to label, oh, label angle. Let's see if this works for me. Interior. Okay, so you can see it's 90 degrees. Right? Okay. So uh, now this gets a little bit tricky. Uh, I wish we could just keep going here, but you can clearly see this curve is not tangent. Now what this guy should have done is he should have given us a radial there because it's non-tangent or a cord bearing. He didn't do that. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to cheat, and sometimes you have to do this. It's nice when you can go in order, but you can't. I'm going to jump down here and put in this other line because this curve is appears to be tangent to this 62.8 foot 9 line. Okay, and then we'll glue those curves together. So you can't always go in order like you want, depending on how the map was done. The maps aren't perfect. All right, so let's draw this in. So uh, we're going to draw this line here. It's got a bearing of north 890900 west. Okay. So quadrant is 4. We have 89.0900. And our distance. 62.89 feet. Okay, now we've got that other little tangent. It's not in space yet. We're just it's just floating over there. Okay, then we're gonna put in this curve. Now this is a curve to the left. The arc swings away to the left, so we gotta use a minus 300 for our radius. And we're gonna go back and use that same command. Draw arc tangent PC radius arc length. Okay, so we've got a minus 300, and our arc length is 162.72, you can see right here. Okay, there's our point of curvature, there's a line on our tangent, draw that in. We can gut check that, that looks right. Okay, and now we're just going to glue these two together with the move command. So I'm going to just move it here to there. Okay, and you can see that looks about right. Okay, now we're going to start coming back down this other side here. Okay, and I'm going to show you another little trick. 
So we are going to offset These two, this tangent and this curve, 25 feet. Okay, so what we just did is we just we just shot this in. Okay, but we don't go the whole length here, so we're going to use the length and command and get our curve the right length. Okay, to do that, he doesn't give us the length here, so we got to add these two numbers together. Oh, this one too, the 10, the 10.18 there too. So we got to calculate our total length. Okay, so we've got 48.03 plus 53.89 plus 10.18. So our curve length is 112.1. Okay, so we're going to use the lengthen command. And I'm going to say, give me my total length, 112.1. And then if I click on this end, it trims here. If I click on this end, it trims here. We want to trim, trim this end, so that's where I'm going to click. Okay, so. Now our curve's in at 112.1, okay, which is what we want. Okay, now this next curve, we can't do tangent uh, because this is a curve. So this is called a compound curve, okay, or I'm sorry, it's a reverse curve. This is a curve to the left, this is a curve to the right, so it's reverse. If this curve had also been a curve to the left, it would be compound, but it's not. But it doesn't matter, you draw compound or inverse curves the same way in Carlson. So we're going to come in here to draw arc. There's a command down here almost at the bottom called compound or reverse. We're going to click that. Okay, so it says pick your start point. That's a start point. Is it compound or reverse? This is a reverse curve. It wants to know the radius. The radius is 50 feet. Okay, you don't have to worry about your minus or your positive. It wants to know how we're going to define the arc. We're going to do that with the length. The length is 31.47. Okay, there's the length. Okay, so that curve is in. Okay, now we've got this big curve here, covers three lots, and he gives us the overall length, which is great. Same radius, 50 feet. This is also a reverse curve. This is a curve to the right, this is a curve to the left, so it's a reverse curve. So let's just practice that. Draw, arc, compound or reverse, pick your point of curvature. Is it compound or reverse? It's reverse. What's the radius? 50 feet. We're going to use length to define the arc. And the arc length is 115.75. Drew that in, looks good. Okay, we've got one more reverse curve. This is a curve to the left, this is a curve to the right, 50 foot radius. Okay, so we're gonna go back up, draw, arc, compound or reverse, click our point of curvature. It's a reverse curve, the radius is 50 feet. The length on this one is 31.12. Sorry, we're going to define it with length. Our arc is defined with length, 31.12. Okay. Okay, we're going to do one more. Then we're going to come over 90 degrees and see if we close this thing out. So we've got another reverse curve here. So this is to the right. This is to the left. It's 300 feet. Okay, but we got to add these lengths up again. He doesn't give them to us. So we've got a 28.18. Plus a 26.09. We've got to add those up because he doesn't give us the overall, so it's 54.27. Okay, draw arc. Compound or reverse. Click our point of curvature. It's a reverse curve. Our radius is 50 feet. We're going to define our curve with the length, and our length we calculated was 54.27. Okay. I goofed that up. I must have hit compound instead of revert. Nope. Let's see. Oh, it's not a 50 foot radius. It's a 300 foot radius. That's why you got to gut check those curves. <laughs> Let's try again with the right radius. Draw, arc, mm, compound or reverse, point of curvature. It's reverse. Our radius is 300 feet, guys, not 50. We're going to define it with the length, 54.27. That looks a little better. Now, let's check our closure. To do that, we're just going to draw from here over 90 degrees to this tangent. Okay, and we want to see how close we get to the end point. Okay, and it's not perfect. So we do have a little closure error there. If I grab that line. We can see we've got a little less than 200 closure, but it's good enough for the girls we're dancing with. 
So there you go, guys. That shows you how to draw tangent curves, some reverse curves, how to use the lengthen command as a little trick there, how you can kind of skip ahead to a tangent and glue some non-tangent curves together if you need to do that. All right, so um, hopefully that wasn't completely worthless. All right, so let's look at those two utilities we wanted to talk about in Carlson. So the first one is uh, we're going to look at uh, the layer translate tool. So if you go under drawing utilities, <coughs> translate layers, this lets you map uh, layer translation. So you can take an input layer and change whatever entity is on that input layer to the output layer that you specify. So when might you use that? Well, for companies like mine, and you have a good set of internal CAD standards, but you're working for a client that wants a CAD deliverable on their own CAD standards, and we do that sometimes if we're working for another surveyor or an engineer, then this is a helpful tool because your folks can go ahead and draft on the, the layer standards they're accustomed to, and then you can translate to the client's layers at the end. Okay, so you can see the way you do that here is you select your input layer, and then you tell it everything on that input layer I want to put on this output layer. So you can see what I've done here is I've taken the default Carlson point label layers, point attribute layers, and in my shop we keep those all on the same layer, survey text point labels. Okay, and then what, what makes this tool really powerful is you can go ahead and save this. So you can save it to, save it to, save it to a layer translation file. And then when you want to, anytime you're working on that client's drawings, you can just load this and it will automatically move your entities over to the to the client's layer standard. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it translated the layers. Now you're not going to see that because we didn't have anything in the drawing. So let's go ahead and draw locate those points again. And then now I will tell you this won't work on layers embedded in blocks. Okay. So uh, I'm going to explode these points. So you can see these point attributes are on the default Carlson layers. Right? So if I want them on the, uh, the redefined horizons layers, I don't have to go do that manually. So we can just use that utility. So come in here to File, Drawing Utilities, Translate Layers, and then I'm just going to hit OK, and you can see it maps the layers over. Now, it doesn't delete those layers after the translation's done, and you probably don't want to ship them to your client, but that's where this next utility comes in super handy. So there's a tr uh, utility in Carlson Survey under file called uh, Drawing Cleanup, which I absolutely love. Kudos to the guys at Carlson. And so this gives you a whole different set of options here, and I'm just going to walk through them. So you can set the user coordinate system to world coordinates, convert inches to feet, import xrefs into the current drawing, remove layers with no entities, remove layers with wildcards, remove unused blocks, line types, and styles, remove duplicate line work with the tolerance here, remove duplicate points, remove overlapping polyline loops, join line work with the same endpoints, convert splines, multi-lines, regions into polylines, convert lines, arcs, circles, ellipses, 3D faces, and solids into polylines, convert civil 3D entities into Carlson entities, uh, uh, convert entities with extrusion to world coordinates, erase blank text entities, erase hatch entities, remove zero length in fragment line work with the tolerance, remove arcs from polylines, reduce polyline vertices with the tolerance, set negative polyline thickness to zero, set ele elevations outside of range to zero. And then you can process the entire drawing or, or the selection. Now don't go in here and just check all these, especially if you're in my shop you want to use the settings we have, right? We, want, we don't want to erase hatch. Um, we don't want to remove arcs from polylines and things like that. So you, be careful with this, but it's a handy tool. We can hit OK. It gives you a little report here. tells you what it did. Okay. Um, for some reason, it still, didn't, it still didn't delete those Carlson layers. I'm not sure why, uh, but it is a handy tool. So you still got to run a purge there to do that. But anyways, check that tool out. File drawing utilities. Uh, no, I'm sorry, file drawing cleanup. Uh, so it's a cool tool. I wish I'd have known about it sooner. I could have been using it <laughs> to do some, do some cool stuff. 
All right, so just to review, guys, we're at 20 minutes. What do we talk about? I showed you how to move point attributes in Carlson survey a couple different ways. We showed you how to draw tangent curves, um, compound or reverse curves, and tangent curves in Carlson. We showed you how to use the lengthen command uh, and the offset command to, to fake, fake in a curve. Um, we showed you how you can skip ahead and draw a tangent curve to another tangent and then glue them together if you have two tangent curves coming in at a non-tangent point of intersection. Um, and then we showed you how to use the um, drawing utilities uh, translate layers tool and the drawing utilities uh, or the, the drawing cleanup tool. So the guys at Carlson do excellent job on their product. I'd highly recommend it and, uh, and hopefully these things uh, help out my uh, survey techs and my CAD drafters. And uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy this video and uh, we'll catch you on the next uh, RH Capping video, guys. Thanks.